Coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show today. We're going to talk all about problems in your garden that you don't need to worry about. As well as deadheading and the important or maybe not so important uh, uh, job of doing such. And we have educator and author and very expertise soil expert, Jeff Lowenfels. Plus your garden questions. That all starts right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you're taking time out of your day to join us on the program, whether you're in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, Banning, California, or listening around the country or around the world via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com under the radio tab or through podcast replay or in-studio video replay. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend and gardening partner, Holly Baird. You can find all of our content at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com where you can find over four. 1,400 garden video, short and long format of in-garden video and in-studio video of every show that we've done and hundreds of garden tips and techniques in the garden. Uh, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show executive sponsor is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, adjust the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. If you want to get a hold of us, you can do that. And here's how you do it. And it's all through the IV Organics 3 in 1 Plant Guard hotlines. IV Organics 3 in 1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees. Shield prune and damaged surfaces for, for your or roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivorganics.com. You can send us an email through the Ivy Organics 3 one plant email inbox. That email address is twvgshow at gmail.com. You can also send us a text on the Instant Access Ivy Organic 3 one plant guard Instant Access text hotline. Send your questions. Text us at 414 414- Three six eight ninety three eleven. That number again is four one four three six eight. 9311. There's many things that we worry about in life, uh, whether you have kids or parents or whatever, neighbors. Uh, gardening is also on that category of things to worry about, but we're going to go over a handful of things here in which we do not need to worry about because there is no point in it. Everything's okie dokie. So we're going to cover several of these problems that you may think are problems, but realistically, they're not an issue whatsoever. We've just uh, been conditioned to see things that look unusual and be concerned about it and try to fix problems that don't need to be fixed. Right, that's right. So, so one, the first one here we have is the maple leaf. It's also called the maple leaf tar spot. And you know you have it because it has dark spots on your maple leaves. They're usually about, um, I don't know, uh, half an inch big or across these little spots. Diameter. Diameter, thank you. Um, but... That's, it's called maple leaf or maple leaf tar spot. If you have a maple leaf, maple tree, it's likely this is going to happen. It's going to happen later on in the year. Uh, people get very, very concerned by it, and some people try to eliminate the problem by removing the tree, which it's not necessary. Uh, people ask us, well, if I have those particular leaves and the spots on the leaves, is it going to be detrimental to the garden if I bring those in as mulch or uh, bring them in in the spring and use them and work them in the soil? And the answer is no, it's not, because those are two different strains or now, species of I- issues there. Okay, now what? Yes. Okay, so yeah, you can use them in your, put them on your garden, use them as mulch in your flower beds. However, you do not want to use them as mulch around the tree. So what you want to do is you want to remove them from the base of the tree. So when we're raking them up in the fall, some t- a lot of people encourage le- the leaves to be left like in the, in, in the, fo- in the woods to keep decompose, to feed the soil, mm-hmm. to continue the soil life and the soil web. Uh, you people want to rake the, them away from the tree. R- rake them away from the tree to remove them. And if you're wanting to keep a manicured lawn, you want to do that. Otherwise, the leaves will choke the grass out and you'll have big yellow spotches uh, on the ground. But in this instance, remove them. Put them in the garden, mulch them, whatever you want to do. it. It's okay. We just want to get them removed from the tree. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it. It may look a little unsightly on your car in the fall or uh, coming off the tree, but 
utilize those leaves. Very beneficial uh, to the garden uh, with the maple leaf spot uh, or tar spot. Next one, a lot of people reach out to us early in spring or during wet spells and say, I have mushrooms growing in my soil. How do I get rid of them? Well, number one, they're not bad. No, they're not bad. It's a fungi. Uh, which, a fungi. Uh, I'm a fungi. Well, that's debatable by some uh, groups that uh, <laughs> been part of. Uh, so it it's good because that shows that there's an incredible uh, level of soil life in your garden. Yeah, mushrooms are decomposers, so that means that they help break down the soil. They help um, increase microbes life in your soil. Now, if you have pets or small children who want to eat those mushrooms, you probably want to keep them away from that. Um, You can knock the mushrooms off or whatever, but it's not a bad thing. Uh, They will come and go very, very quickly uh, without any issue. Uh, You will see this whenever it's very moist in the soil. Uh, kind of in, like under the, sometimes it's under like a, a canopy of a tomato or a, a, a bush, a uh, vegetable of some sort. Don't worry about it. Totally fine. Let it be. It'll come. It'll go. Sometimes it'll come and go and you don't even know it, it happened because the, the lifespan of it is so short on it. Uh, algae in the rain barrel. Right. So if you have a, a more opaque rain barrel like we do, we have one that's um, I don't know, it's like just a... Off-white, clearish. Off-white, clearish, yeah, opaque. Um, if you have an opaque, <clears throat> excuse me, rain barrel, um, sometimes you get algae, and that's okay. If It's okay if you get algae. If it's a lot of algae where it's choking it out, maybe your rain barrel's not draining properly because of the... Or you're not draining it and using it regularly. Right. It, um, if it uh, becomes problematic, then you want to drain it and clean it out, but... If it just has some algae, that's normal because what's happening is the the sun is heating up that water, creating the the algae, and that's okay. Now, if you're if you do have a problem with it, you can always paint your rain barrel, and then that will help block out a lot of the light. Right. Uh, otherwise, it's not a big deal. Some of these um, rain barrels are dark colored, so it's not an issue uh, with it at all. Uh, and so it, it's fine. Water. Now, in. what you can do is. Um, if your water does take on a bad odor, you can um, drain the rain barrel. And uh, just keep, you can add, uh, you drain the rain barrel and uh, let it dry out and knock some of that out. But uh, you can just paint it, leave it alone. It's not a big, big deal on that. Next thing is um, wilted leaves of your vine crops. Uh, this is not if uh, you have a disease or problem, your squashes, I've seen this with peppers, some tomatoes, uh, vine crops, watermelons, um, pumpkins, very large leafed plants will get very wilted and almost look like they're dying uh, during the hottest portions of the day. This is not the squash vine bore result. It may be if it doesn't perk back up in the evening. You can look up squash vine bore, and we've talked about it on the program, how to deal with that. But these are all plants that reduce their surface area to present, pre- prevent from getting you know, overheated, basically. Less surface area, less r- evaporation of moisture from the plant. So you see the hottest portion of the day, they're all wilted. That's fine. If they don't perk up at night, water and or you have an issue with the squash vine borer. Another thing that we have that you will see or you may see or you have seen that can be very disturbing is a big pile of scum-like slime. Slime. It's, it, called, it's called dog vomit slime. Mike. Yes, that's the actual yes. name. I don't think it's a scientific it's name. A, the scientific name is Fuligo septica. Okay. Um, and what it is is it's basically a slime mold. It is part of Natural. The, it's natural. It's, it's not... Part of, it's, it's a fungus type situation. It's a mold, and some people also call it scrambled egg slime. <laughs> it is. It is yellow. It's like yellowish. Yeah, yellowish. And if you don't know what it is, it will disturb you. Yeah. Uh, because it comes real quick, and then it disappears. And you, it is, will sometimes form on mulch, sometimes right on the soil itself. So if you see a big pile of this mushroom-like fungus pile. It's like, a, it's like a yellowish color. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, that's what it is. Also, if you've got a lot of rain, we've well, had a lot. Oh, go ahead. Yes. With that, what you want to do is, if you if you are concerned, if you feel like you have a lot, it's not harmful. It's not harmful to your soil. It's not harmful to you. Usually about three days, it's gone. Right. It but if you are concerned, you have a problem with it, then you would want to break it up and then let it dry out. So you kind of just want to break it up and then that 
breaks up the spores a little bit and then it'll dry out. Again, don't worry about it. Not a big deal. Another thing you shouldn't worry too much about is purslane in the garden. Now, what is purslane? So purslane is a weed. Um, some people do grow it on purpose. Yes, there are seeds. I believe MI Gardener has purslane seeds. It's and it's kind of a succulent looking weed. It's it's kind of meaty, I guess you could explain it. It's a, it's a very... It's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. And we and get it, that a lot of... It grows low to the soil. And, and when we get a lot of rain in the garden, it naturally comes up uh, in, in our area and, and a lot of places throughout the, uh, the country. It's beneficial if you want to eat your weeds. It, it doesn't have a horrible taste to it. It is high in omega fatty three acids. Uh, it's very good for that. So um, we've, well, I've had to pull a tremendous amount out because of the wet spring because it will get you know, starting to choke out other plants. But if you see some of that, don't worry about it. You can certainly eat it. A proper identification is required for this. Um, so th- that's another yeah, one. So it's high in omega-3 fatty acid, vitamin A, and vitamin C. So you can definitely eat it. Some people will actually add it to, like, stir fries, whatnot. Um, Our niece and nephew like it. That's, yeah. uh, I, I don't mind some of it. It's this you know, overconsumption of it can cause uh, some issues. And another one is uh, the last thing we shouldn't worry about or don't need to worry about because we can't do much about it is weeds to a certain degree. If we, we've got a tremendous amount of weeds. Now, if you're in containers or raised beds, you probably won't have that many, but in the traditional ground right now, uh, we have a lot of weeds. And on Friday, I was out pulling weeds, and uh, you're just not going to get them all out. I've purged the beds early in the spring, thought I had all the weeds out, but a lot of weed seeds have regenerated, and I'm dealing, we deal with a lot of weeds. But right. So you, this is one of those years where, since we're having a lot of rain, not a bad having, thing. Not a bad thing. We're having a lot of heat now. <clears throat> Your plants are going to start to do well, hopefully, but they should start to do well, which means also that this is good conditions for weeds. And weeds are a problem we all face. I get a lot of questions myself. Uh, people message me and say, what do I do about these weeds, blah, blah, blah. It, it is what it is kind of situation. Yes, you can help to control them. You're not going to completely eradicate them. Pull it's them from the roots if you can. Get them while they're early if you can. If you can't, wait until an, a soft rain has softened the soil and remove as many of the weeds, roots and all, and that will reduce the amount of problems that you have and try to keep off on it, a cup, keep up on it. Now, if you have three or four or five hundred square feet or three or four thousand square feet that's a little more difficult uh we divide our garden up into raised berms uh permanent grow areas designated walk areas to where we can go okay here's what i need to do here's what i need to do instead of having a very large pallet of garden to go okay there's a lot here how am i going to get this all done uh do a little but do it often uh create grids or create okay here's like like on friday i did the front yard bed i did um one of the big beds in the back i did a small division of a bed so uh stuff got done it was very hot but stuff got done and it's just going to be a progressively a progressive across the summer project in order to control the weeds and use the weeds uh try to get them before they go to seed and then put them in your compost pile and utilize that nitrogen that all the the nutrients that they provide uh, for next year's garden. So that is just some of the uh, different problems that you may think you have in your garden that you do not have to worry about in your garden because there's nothing to be worried about. When we come back, we're going to talk about deadheading and uh, why you should or maybe shouldn't do it. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com has all the gardening information you need videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. The Handy Safety Knife is a patented, high quality knife that's worn like a ring, so it's always conveniently at hand and very easy and efficient to work with. That's why you'll find the Handy Safety Knife at work in a wide range of industries and applications. Learn more at HandySafetyKnife.com. Use coupon code WVG to get 10% off and free shipping one time use only at HandySafetyKnife.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or 
to pray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patients. Black Walnut Free produces toxin. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. The roots of a walnut tree produces a substance called Julong. This is a toxin to many garden plants. The toxin zone from the mature tree can reach 50 to 80 feet away from the trunk and can last many years after the tree is gone. You can use a method of gardening such as straw bale gardening or raised bed gardening in the areas of where the tree once were. Feed your garden all season long with the HydroFeed Fertilizer Injector by Chapin. HydroFeed Injector can be filled with water-soluble fertilizer and connected to a garden hose or irrigation system, whether drip, sprinkler, or soaker hose. Fertilizer is drawn into the water system at a consistent ratio to feed and water your garden at the same time. Three models are available for gardens of different sizes. Find HydroFeed at the Home Depot, Ace Hardware, or www.chapinmfg.com Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mel's has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Row Maker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Berry. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge, natural, organic, friendly, garden-friendly products. Based on research and innovation, after 28 years, they are the leader in organic, lawn, and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. 
and said they have manure-free fertilizers, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizers. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com to find more information and where to buy. Deadheading is a way to continue the blooms on our flowers. We can certainly use Dr. Earth for that, but also deadheading is sometimes required for the flowers and sometimes not. First of all, what is deadheading for those who may have heard but not familiar with the uh, operation of the term? It's the removal of the dead or spent flower heads. So if the flower heads are withered away, basically dead, that's what you would do is remove those flower heads. Now, why would one choose uh, to dead ahead a flower, rose, whatever the the plant, uh, the flower is here? It helps boost flower blooms. So it, when you're deadheading, what it does is it, it's the same thing like when you harvest. Um, stimulates the plant. Stimulate the plant. So then it, it's going to put more blooms on. Uh, so and, and then a lot of plants, whenever you deadhead, now whenever we want to deadhead, we want to not cut down at the base of the plant. We just want to cut right behind that old flower head uh, bulb. Right. Or, so you, uh, yeah, you would just snip cut, it. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to pull it because you can just disrupt the plant. Right. So you just snip it. Take a scissors or. Uh, you could pl- like if you have like pansies or something or violas, you could just. You could just uh, pinch it off because they're very delicate stem plants. But you don't want to pull it. You definitely want to snip it. Snip it uh, in order. And then the second blooms on a lot of these flowers will last longer. And and right. that will also uh, encourage these flowers to create more and throughout the, the growing season in order to do that. Now, not all flowers or needs, uh, not all flowers need to be deadheaded, like uh, Bleeding Heart or um, what are some other ones here that we can, that we don't necessarily have to deadhead? Um, bleeding Heart is one, is uh, ones that you do want to oh, deadhead. Oh, do we, we do want to, okay. Yeah, Bleeding Heart, Phlox, um, Delphinium, Lupi- Lupine, Sage, Salvia, Veronica, Shasta Daisies, um, Yarrow, Coneflower, Marigolds, Pansies, um, Violas are all ideal candidates to deadhead, especially like the shade flowers, like impatience, petunias, all of those you can definitely deadhead. And we we want to do this. We don't have to wait until the flower is completely completely dead. Once we see the peak of the flower has bloomed, and you can see the downward turn of the. Uh, Pot- the, the of the flower itself, you can go ahead and remove it. We don't have to wait until the flower is completely wilted away and then cut it back. So uh, you can do it right away. That will help encourage the continuous blooms of the flower. And uh, secondly, it will help uh, bring more pollinators in because you're having very f- vibrant flower color in your yard. Another thing is, is that you want to do your research. So if you're not sure if you should deadhead something or not or when to or prune it versus deadheading because pruning it, then you, a lot of times you're that, that's, two, a, different that's things. two different things. Okay. Right? Um, so pruning it is different than deadheading it, but it's still kind of the same process. You're removing old to help the new growth. Correct. But but um, pruning, but, you're removing stems. Deadheading, you're removing just the flower right. itself. So that's what's important to do your research because you don't. If you don't know what that plant needs, then it's good. It's something you, you want. You to could know. actually kill the plant right. or, or greatly reduce and stress it out to the point where it's going to take. Long time to recover, so we want to so do our some research here. Are, yeah. are special because what they have is behind their the flower that they currently have is another flower ready to bloom. So it's like kind of like your teeth when <laughs> you lose your as baby a child. Teeth. Yeah, as a child, then you have adult teeth right underneath. That's that's what's going on here. Um, so if you deadheaded, you're basically cutting the flower away. You're pr- you're cutting all the flowers for mm-hmm. that year. Uh, so one of them is marguerites, but again, do your research. Um, light color roses, like yellow and white. And pinks. And pinks. They're going to look wilty, and that's okay. You want to, um, it, when they start to look wilty, then you can deadhead them. Yeah, even if the uh, the majority of the flower, it, they're going to start getting dead around the edges, especially those oh, very light colored ones, and they can look, if you have a lot of flowers, they can look very unpleasant. So we want to get rid of the old ones and allow the new uh, growth to occur. Now, uh, there are flowers in which you can purchase that you do not have to deadhead, not because they don't require it, but because over the years, 
it has uh, hibernization or, or botanist, I guess would be the correct term, have created a plant in which it essentially self-deadheads and you don't have to do anything. You have to prune it at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year, and, and that's it. It will actually self-prune or self-deadhead itself. Now, this is not... Some people believe that this is a genetically modification of the plant and not a hybridization. The difference between it's a hybridization, not a genetic modification, because genetically modification of a plant or a crop is the alteration of the DNA actually going in and changing the structure of the cell molecules inside of that plant. Hybridization uh, is the cross-pollination and continuing alteration of the plants to get a specific offspring in which the characteristics in which you want occur. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's not a genetically modification, uh, so we don't want to uh, preach, preach that or, or inform you of that. Uh, but if you want a lot of plants, a lot of flowers, that you don't have to do almost any maintenance on, there are a lot of varieties now available on the market. I mean, you technically don't have to deadhead. It's just that it does make things look nicer. And you get more and flowers. You get more flowers. So that's why, that's, that's why you, would want, you would want to do so. Um, a lot of people grow perennials. They don't do anything to them. They might divide them as needed, but um, that's okay, too. But it's just this is something that if you bought a plant, you want it to look nice and fresh all season long, um, you definitely want to, you want to do the deadheading. Now, when we deadhead, we again, you can pinch them off, or what we would recommend is a good, sharp pair of uh, pruners uh, because you get a, you're going to get a nice, clean cut off of that instead of a, um, a rough pull, or a, a dull scissors will actually crimp the ends of the flowers. So if we can get a nice clean cut and, and make sure your pruners are clean, uh, that you're going to have a better, healthier looking plant uh, whenever it gets to that point. Uh, so it's always uh, and just a pair of scissors, kitchen scissors, kitchen shears will do the same thing. Uh, we can throw these in the compost pile or just uh, get rid of them that way. They're not going to be diseased, so we don't have to worry about um, that type of uh, issue with it. Um, so we can do that when it gets to the deadheading portion of the year and um, in order to keep our flowers. And again, with the roses, a lot of people grow roses to, um, as a landscaper, uh, beauty. So we want to go ahead and uh, keep those clean and cut all summer long uh, when it comes to that um, uh, aspect of deadheading. So if you've never deadhead, you want to go ahead and see if that's something that your plants are requiring for. Well, now is the time. The weather is warming up. It's already hot here. And you'll want to protect your garden from various beetles, weevils, and boars, including those Japanese beetles that are flying around that's destroying everything. And what better way to prevent these pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they are larvae? Grub Gone is an easy-to-apply granule product that can be sprayed on your turf to successfully control grub invaders. Developed by Phylum Bioproducts from our naturally occurring bacteria, Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT product that specifically targets only certain scarab pests, and it is safe to use around beetles or bees and other beneficial insects. Yes, if you're oh, if you're already uh, seeing those beetles flying around in your yard, use Beetle Gone. It's an organic water distributor dis- dispersible powder that can be sprayed directly on your edible plants. Find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P H Y L L O M bioproducts.com well when we come back author Jeff Sellenswell will be with us you're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show got a question? email the show at twvgshow at gmail.com Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. 
Power Plant to Earth Auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root to soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthier, more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand welded and made in the USA, lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear in all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Drip Garden is a self-watering, self-fertilizing, pop-up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4 foot by 4 foot area. DripGarden.com. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trades with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune, just 99 cents at migardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www www.outpost.coop. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trades with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Dharmaceuticals essential oils are high-grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit Dharmaceuticals.com. Planting bush beans or planting pole beans, a summer crop, which is better and why? This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. So, which is better, pole beans or bush beans? It really determines the garden and the gardener. Bush beans will take 40 to 60 days to reach a mature state. They will produce for two to three weeks, and then their life cycle is pretty much over. What you want to do with bush beans is succession plant a row every week in order to get a harvest throughout the summer months. You can also plant bush beans nine per square foot and you can also throw them in very small areas that you have opened up in your garden. Pole beans on the other hand will take 70 to 80 days to reach maturity. They will produce all the way up till frost or you kill it or disease kills it. Bean rust is a problem that we have in our garden some years late in the season. Pole beans are utilized to maximize the space you have available because you're growing vertically, whether utilizing a trellis or a pole or some type of fencing. Both of these plants require you to continue to harvest their produce. If you continue to harvest the bean, they're going to produce more. If you do not harvest, they're going to shut down once they have a mature state of beans on the crop. Pole beans can produce two to three times more beans over a growing season versus one bush bean plant. So also keep that available. Keeping them weeded, keeping them watered, keeping them healthy and in full sun is the best. 
Bush beans and pole beans can do somewhat decent in a partial shade. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com and thank them for their support. So Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center, you want to get a deal, they've given us the inside information. They have now all of their plant stocks on sale. Buy one and get one of equal or same value for free. So you could buy a rose bush and get a rose bush of the same value or lesser for free. Now this goes through uh, the uh, in, in middle portions of July. So buy one, get one free. All plants. That's the insider. That's specifically for you, the listener. So go there and tell them you heard about it on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show and buy one, get one free. Where can we find Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center? 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield, just south of Layton. You can call 414-282-4220 or go to bluemills.com. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Fellows is a columnist, author, and lecturer. He's become a leader in the organic gardening and sustainable movement as a result of his two best selling books. His talks have been converted to tens of thousands of gardeners at venues throughout North and South America. Fun fact he's also a lawyer. Welcome to the program, Jeff. How are you today? We are doing good. We thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on the program and enlighten Holly, myself, and all of our listeners with a little bit more knowledge than what, uh, than what we are normally getting on the program. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> so we, we occasionally talk about mycorrhizae um, on the show, but we, I don't think we always explain it as best as we could. What is mycorrhizae, and how does it help your plants grow? Well, I always start with the beginning, <clears throat> and that is the fact that uh, there are uh, certain fungi called mycorrhizal fungus or fungi that associate symbiotically with about 90% of all of the plants on the planet Earth in return for exudates, carbon, and sugars that they get from the plant, the fungi go out and get food for the, the plant that's feeding it. And so it brings back nitrogen and phosphorus and water and zinc, all sorts of great stuff, to the plant uh, in return for those exudates. The relationship between the mycorrhizal fungi and the roots are, is called a mycorrhizae if it's a singular. And if it's more than one, it's mycorrhiza. So uh, that's, that's, that's what you have. All, almost every plant in your garden has this association, uh, except for the things your kids don't like to eat. The things that are in the cabbage family, for example, uh, do not have a mycorrhizal association. But virtually almost everything else does. And, and so that if you are able to manage uh, your your mycorrhizal herd, uh, you can really help your garden grow to its best potential. So with the mycorrhizae, is it beneficial for us to go buy it, or should we just allow nature to do its thing? Well, it depends. Uh, so let's take, for example, a place like Anchorage, Alaska, where I live. I suspect this is probably true in many parts of Wisconsin. We start our seeds indoors for our vegetables and a lot of our annuals uh, uh, that we plant outdoors. In that instance, it makes a great deal of sense to use the right mycorrhizal fungi. You can introduce it extremely early in the life of the plant. The plant gets a great benefit from it, even indoors in, in the pot. Uh, and then when it goes outside, uh, we put more mycorrhizal fungi down just to make sure that we're, we're getting enough. 
uh, and and that's sort of how we do it. We we tend not to mi- put mycorrhizal fungi down around trees or around tree roots or bushes uh, because they usually come with soil that contains the natural mycorrhizal that is already feeding that plant. Uh, but but our annuals and our row crops we use mycorrhizal fungi all the time. Always good information. Now you 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 created and started a very unique uh, organization, Plant a Row for the Hungry. What does this organization uh, organization do, and or encourage others to do? Right. Well, uh, we the garden writers and communicators in America, we reach an awful awful lot of people, uh, and it just makes sense to try to convince every gardener in America to plant one row in their own garden and dedicate the harvest from that row to feed the hungry and place the responsibility on the gardener to get that food to some group or some individual or a family uh, that needs that food so that there's no money, you know, no organization that has to be supported, uh, nothing slips between the lip and the cup and, and it's just delivered directly. Um, and it's been a, an incredibly success, successful program. And the simple reason is because gardeners share. We share information, we share tools, we share seeds, and we share our love for fellow human beings. And so we've got 35 million people going to bed hungry in the United States alone. Uh, there's no reason why we, we should be throwing away those zucchinis. Uh, or, or letting that pumpkin or whatever it may be uh, go to rot on the vine. It just doesn't make any sense. And, and so that's why we started the program. And if anybody who's listening wants to participate in the program, all you have to do is dedicate one row in your garden, take that food to a food bank, to a church or a synagogue, or, or even a neighbor that needs that food, uh, and, and you're a part of Plant a Row for the Hungry. We raise hundreds of thousands of pounds of food every year. Each pound of food basically is enough to feed four meals, which is amazing. So so really, it's an incredibly important program, and I hope anybody who's listening participates. When did you start that organization? Well, it was started back in 1993 or four here in Anchorage, Alaska. It was called Plant a Row for Beans, our food kitchen. Uh, and then the Garden Writers of America came up, now called the Garden Communicators, uh, came up and uh, had a meeting here and saw the program and adopted it as theirs. So it went national in 1996. Canada has a program as well. Um, we've been contacted by Australia, England. People do it all around the world because it's just such a natural thing to do. Too many people go to bed hungry at night. And it doesn't matter what your politics are, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, hunger is hunger, and, and if we as gardeners can help solve that problem, we need to do it. And, and it's really unique. You say you, you, your your comment was you don't have to necessarily take it to a food bank if you know you have a neighbor hungry. That you're doing your part by giving them uh, that well, at row. That's the best way to go. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it, it, and it's, it's it's sad, but we all know people that are hungry. Uh, you know, people living in cars, et cetera, et cetera. So it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. You know, I feel, I feel very, very passionately about it, the same way I feel about not using chemicals. I, th- I think, you know, this is something that we as gardeners, as a group, universally, it ought to be a requirement that if you garden, you give some of your food. And if you only grow flowers, you know, uh, the, 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 the soup kitchens, et cetera, they love to have some flowers. These are just regular people who've got some bad luck. So we need to help them. Definitely. That's that's perfect. Now, we talk, during our talks, we talk about NPK a lot, nitrogen, um, phosphorus, potassium. What are some other, um, well, those are the macronutrients. Big three. The big three. Um, what are some micronutrients in your soil in addition to those? And um, sure. how do we know if there's a deficiency? Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, I've written three books now, and, and actually I got a fourth one coming out. But but I've got three I have three books out, and they all sort of tie together. And you know, the one thing that I get from people is they always sort of confuse macro and micronutrients, and I always have to bang them over the head. It's it's a bad set of names because you need them all. And it's not a question of oh, this is micro, so you, so you just you know. No, it's, it's just as important as anything else. And there are four micronutrients that I, I mean, if I had to pick one, 
you know, probably, I, I have trouble. So I'm going to go through it. Boron is key because you don't get cell walls without boron. You don't get pollination without boron. The pollen tube doesn't form without boron. So that's key. You need iron in order to get, you know, good chlorophyll. Uh, and, and the synthesis of chlorophyll requires iron, so that's key. You need manganese because it, it, it's needed for oxygen, and you need oxygen uh, during photosynthesis. And then you need zinc because it's in all sorts. It's in like it's in a gazongo number of enzymes uh, and, that regulate all of the processes in, in life. You know, photosynthesis and plant growth and you know, all that kind of stuff. So, so those four: boron, iron. Magnesium and zinc are key, but of course, again, if you're missing just one of the essential elements, you're missing an essential element, uh, whether it's a macro or a micro, uh, and, you, and you really need to, and most gardeners don't, test your soil to find out. It's the only way to know. You can't tell by looking at the leaves. Uh, it may give you a guess, but there's a hundred different reasons why a leaf would turn yellow. You know, we think it's nitrogen. Oh no, it could be a, it could be 99 other things, and so so it's really important to test your soil at least once so you know what you have, and then you've got something you can use to test later on to see uh, you know if you need to change things whether you're trending in the right direction. So those are those are all very very important. Just to but get there's, a, there's, a, there's another thing that I do now. Um, and that is that I, I, I measure the biomass of my soil as well. So I want to know what the microbes are. I want to know, you know, whether, whether I've got the right nutrients, all 18, you know, 17 of them. And then I want to know whether I am adding biomass to the soil, because biomass in soil is basically dead bacteria. That's what humus is. And I want to know I'm adding stuff into my soil like crazy. And, and so there's a machine now, I call it a machine, it's, a, it's an instrument, it's a kit called a microbiometer. And you can get it at microbiometer.com on the internet. And you can, in five minutes, test your soil to see whether or not what you're doing is adding, uh, uh, you know, adding biomass to your soil, which is what you want to be doing all the time. Well, with the macro and micronutrients, how many are we talking? Like, we know MPK is a three. Are we talking 80, 90 of each of those different categories or beyond that? Uh, in when you say 80, 80, 90, I'm not sure what you mean. Like, different oh, elements of the macro and micronutrients. I've, I've heard different oh. you, YouTubers say, oh, we have 90 plus micronutrients and 100 plus macronutrients. Are those numbers realistic or are we way shorter or, or over on those? We're, we're, way, we're way shorter. I mean, we have 17 nutrients. I think there are nine macronutrients. The other ones are micronutrients. There may be a few more, that, but, the, but the quantities are so small that it's impossible, and so far it's been impossible to, to determine whether they're actually needed. Um, you know, I think where people get confused is because in the organic world in particular, there's a great deal of excitement about using things like kelp, and the reason why people use kelp is because it's got 62 or 59, you know, uh, different elements in it, and so everybody goes, oh boy, you put that in your soil and your plants get everything they need. Well. Uh, you know, they only need those 17 elements. The rest is filler. Now, it, it, I'll tell you what it does do. It helps the microbes. Uh, you know, it helps build enzymes in the soil. But it doesn't necessarily help the plant to add anything other than those 17 nutrients. People who grow hydroponically, that's all you need. 17 nutrients. And so that list is is there for a reason and people really do need to test and make sure that they've got all of those nutrients in the right numbers okay so what are some good ways to build up the fungi and decomposers in your soil well uh by adding organic material you, ge you generally bring them you know uh, build it and they will come so so mulches are very very important um, and they're important not only just for the fungi, but they're important for the bacterial and other members of the soil food web as well. But, but the basic way to get good fungal growth is to add brown, uh, well, what would you consider to be brown material that you would put into a compost pile? So basically, uh, you know, around the yard, leaves, uh, chips, uh, things that are hard to digest, uh, those are things that fun fungi break down. And if you lay it out in the garden, 
the fungi will come and they will break it down and then they'll aid your garden in the process obviously so uh, what I love to do is I, I love to start out the season I, I this year I took a microbiometer test uh, and then I put the mulch down and uh, I'm going to take a test actually probably this weekend and then I'll take another test at the end of the year and see how much fungal biomass that I've added to the soil which is key is it adding to the soil now up here in Alaska this year it is because whew, it is hot and we are getting a lot of decay <laughs> well a lot of great information Jeff how can we find more out about you and find your books well I, I have three books out they're generally on it well they're all on Amazon they all start with the word teeming t-e-a-m uh, i-n-g teeming with nutrients teeming with microbes and teeming with fungi um, and uh, I'm all over the internet, so you can go to my website at, at jefflowenfels.com, um, or you can send me an email. My addresses are all in the books, etc. And as you can tell, you can hardly shut me up. I'm really <laughs> excited about this stuff. Well, Jeff, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day uh, to join Holly and myself on the program and educate us on a variety of topics here uh, that we've learned quite a bit from. Oh, I'm glad you did. Well, any time, and you have a great day out there in Wisconsin. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. And when, right. Thank you. And when we come back, it's all about your garden questions and our garden answers. You can always visit our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it, tomatosnaps.com. Spending time scrubbing pesky dirt off your hands after gardening? Use Workman's Friend Superior Skin Cream with added barrier protection, creating a protective layer on your skin surface, allowing for easy cleanup, all while moisturizing and healing your skin. Non-greasy, fragrant-free, and fast-absorbing. Apply first, get to work, wipe clean. This friend has you covered for whatever you're getting into. Visit WorkmansFriendBrand.com. Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com Soil Diva is the best kept secret in the gardening world. Soil Diva is an all-natural, liquid, biological soil and plant stimulant product. Check it out at SoilDiva.net do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit Bobex.com. B O B B. BEX.COM. Big Fats has a variety of unique and delicious hot sauces available at mild, medium, and hot. A small company looking to change the world with all natural hot sauces made from quality ingredients and a whole lot of love. BigFatsHotSauce.com. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need, from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cards, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 278 and online at beansandbarley.com. Do you want fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood? Check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. Find out where to pick up quality produce at tree-ripe.com. They have beautiful tasty peaches and juicy sweet blueberries. If you're tired of the non-taste peaches and the bad blueberries from your local grocer, Tree Ripe has what you need. They come right to a stop in your neighborhood, fresh off the truck, right from the source. To find locations and schedules, visit tree-ripe.com. They're in Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and right here in Wisconsin, tree-ripe.com is your go-to place for the freshest produce around. 
Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, BobX, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Ivy Organics and Real Life Mind Garden naturally protects plants against damage and sunburn. Insects and rodents protects newly installed plants and trees. Shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees. Ornamental trees and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, you can visit ivyorganics.com. You can send us an email through the Ivy Organics 3-1 Plant Guard email inbox. The email address is twvgshow at gmail.com. You can send us a text at 414-368-9311. Uh, what is the difference between, is liquid pectin the same as powdered pectin, and can I interchange the two for a canning recipe? So liquid pectin and powder, powder pectin are not the same. Powder pectin is uh, a powder and liquid is a liquid. And based on the recipe, you want to follow the directions and use what is recommended. Luckily, you can buy both at most any local grocery store. Um, but you definitely want to make sure that you're following that direction. Any suggestions on growing radishes? Great leaves, no bulbs. Well, radishes are a short-day, cool-season crop that can be grown early in the spring, late in the fall, based on the region in which you live. They do not do well. They will not develop a bulb during the hottest portions or the warmer portions of the year. However, with the plant going to seed, putting a flower head on, bolting, whatever the term you want to use, allow those flowers to turn into little green uh, pea-like shoots. Those are edible and they taste just like the bulb. So if you're not able to get the bulb because it's too late in the season, allow it to go to seed, allow it to go to flower, eat those pods in the green form, and you can have radishes. Some people actually pickle those as well. But plant in the spring, plant in the fall, you'll have good radish. Mark has problems with rabbits and wants to know if blood meal is a good way to repel them. Well, yes, if you are able to keep the blood mill dry. When it gets wet, it loses the effectiveness. So here's two suggestions in which would help reduce the number of rabbits in your yard, your garden. Wrap the entire growing area in a two-foot-high poultry fence. A little investment, but it's worth it. Leave it up year-round. That's what we do. Secondly, go to bobex.com, B-O-B-B-E-X dot C-O-M. They have animal repellent as also rabbit repellent, and it's an all-natural spray, and it will help reduce the problem. Pam wants to know how she can keep her basil from not flowering and producing all season long. Let's go to Standard Processes. Ben, he is the farm property supervisor there. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local healthcare professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. This is Ben Bartlett from the Standard Process Organic Farm. Today, Pam asked a question about basil. She wondered if she could do anything to keep her plants growing and not flowering all summer long so she has basil to harvest. There's a couple of things you can do. Basil is a very forgiving plant. And as those flowers bolt or produce a flower and bud, you can snip those off. And the basil will keep producing leaves, and you can harvest those over a longer period of time. About the only other thing you can do is keep the soil cool around those plants, either keep them in a shade, put some shade cloth down, and keep those plants more productive longer by keeping them cool. 
Enjoy basil early or late. You can put them in early in the spring or late in the fall and use those shoulder seasons where the temperatures aren't quite so extreme. But basil is one of those for plants that you can actually help manage to get growth all year long. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, Holly, remind them about the executive sponsor. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Tune in next week. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your gardening group how to find us. That's how we grow and that's how we all learn together. We're going to talk about the life under the soil. All the things that we do not see and are unaware of. The really unique, fascinating world of the soil web. As well as food you can store without canning or how to store food without canning. And founder of Epic Gardening out of San Diego, Kevin Esperl will be with us. Plus your garden questions. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can do that in a couple of different ways. One, by going to your favorite podcast providing website and searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. You're going also go to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, clicking on the radio tab at the top of the page for full length or the highlight tab on the right hand side for segments of all past shows. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joy and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.